next one come back, Coach, was we kind of had the conversation with um, uh, having the drug starts, and we had a little bit of that this evening. We did. Um, with, uh, with Cincinnati, felt like the same kind of thing happened. Do you feel like the bump in the road leading into this kind of um, led to kind of a tendency of opening the game, and that's why there was a slow start, or what do you think it was? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think what – what we said they were going to do is exactly what they did. They were getting loose balls. They were getting offensive rebounds. They were getting transition. I mean, they score. They're monsters in, in those three categories. Um, and so we just had to settle them down and let them know that, I mean, they're going to score like that. We can't foul them. We can't bail them out because they got the foul time foul line 15 times, and they're a really good free throw shooter. They scored 14 points. And so we just really had to, you know, settle them down a little bit because the same thing at Cincinnati. Everybody's going to play a zone now. Newsflash. So at Cincinnati, it was the same thing. We weren't scoring, and then we weren't getting stops. You don't, you don't get to do that. Just because you don't score, you still got to get stops, right? And so that kind of was the message at all times, no matter what. If you're not making shots, and um, you got to go back down and play defense. And, of course, Shania was in the starting lineup mm -hmm. for us tonight, so I'm, 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 I would guess that you would kind of counteract some of the perimeter play or the lateral defense yep. she's in there. Or? Yeah, she does a great – I mean, she's so athletic, and she can pressure the ball really well. And – I mean, I think our team, we have really nine players that can, anybody could start. I mean, I said that at the beginning. So, obviously, we came off a bad loss. So, we just got to, you know, we're going to keep mixing it up. I think um, I think that's super important to make sure that everybody is just ready to go at any time, you know, because I think championship teams and winning teams, they have more than just six players that play a lot of minutes. I mean, we got nine players in and t tonight, and that was good. Right. And, and, and um, with that in mind, like, of course, you know, you talked about having a rough start. Where did you feel like the game started to turn around a little bit to where um, they were going to kind of right into ship? What, what yeah, in the second, in second half, Moss and he hitting those high post shots. I mean, she hit a bunch. Like, And so they had to change up what they do, were doing defensively because at first they were not guarding her at the high post, and she was making shots and making shots. And that's big because Moss, you know, is not known to be a great high post shooter. And now that's a, that's a big threat for people that are watching the game. So then they had to switch up, and they had to come up, and then – it opened everybody else up. Obviously, Diamond was a beast, and Diamond, she she came to play right away, and I thought it was great that we had more than, you know, we talk about balanced scoring all the time, and Tay had, Moss had 17, Tay had 19, and Diamond had 21. I mean, that's, those are our go-to players. Lish is a go-to player. I mean, we have a lot of go-to players, but those three, I mean, they came offensively for us in those, in the second and third and fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned your bench and score, they're both of your captains. Um, what, do you, what was it that you noticed um, from your perspective that they didn't kind of rally to come back? Well, I mean, we talked about that too. I mean, we had a, a bunch of meetings here after the Cincinnati loss, and they know it's their responsibility. They're captains. They got picked captains for a reason, right? And so it's like me, if we lose a game, it's my fault, right? I'm the head coach. It's my fault. Then it's my coach's fault, and then it's the captain's fault, right? And they're okay with that because they, they know that it's their jobs to get everybody ready. And they got they got a lot of pressure on them to do a lot of things, you know. But when you're a go-to player, and you know your team's your team votes you as a captain, you got to lead and you know show up every night. So um, they did a really good job tonight. Yeah, I noticed you used the air quotes there talking about the high post shots from Moss. Um, she had 17 tonight. Do you feel like this was her best game of the season? It's offensively, yes. Moss is always great defensively for us. Always, always. It doesn't matter which really which game it was, you know. But she. Yeah, 17 points. She she needs to continue to do that. You know, it, it's we, we were talking about Tulane free throw shooting. They're 14 yep. to 15. That 15, Destiny goes in and gets that rebound, calls timeout. Yep. I mean, that that starts the uh, the the uh, the uh, trip towards the end of the game. There, how mm -hmm. big was the play in the last uh, few seconds? Well, that's what Destiny does. She rebounds and she hates to lose and. She goes in there and gets those rebounds, and obviously we've been in a lot of situations like this already where we got to call timeout and bring them up, right? And they hadn't fouled us, so they had to get a bunch of fouls there and foul, foul, foul. That took some time off the clock, right? So, um, But that's what Destiny's great at. I mean, everybody's great at something, and you got to be really good at the one thing you're great at, especially in big games like this. They're a really good team, really good team, really well coached. Um, they got a lot of really great players. I mean, they're, they're, kinda, they're a team to reckon with. They're good. Is there something that um, you noticed that was kind of a signature for what they do compared to other teams in the conference um, that helps them be such a high-scoring squad? Well, they just got so many weapons that can score, and they got a lot of people back. I think Moon really, really enhances them. I think Dinah Jones is a phenomenal player, and um, Ursula Clark is such a different kind of player. I mean, she's at the high post, and now our posts are guarding a guard, and 
she's just really tough. I mean, they have they have good players on the team. Crystal Freeman didn't come um, offensively as well as we did a good job pressuring her and not letting her just catch and shoot and make shots easy. But I think those three are uh, Ursula Clark, Moon, and uh, Diana Jones are just they are they're like our three. You know what I mean? So they're really they're gonna keep coming every single game, every single time they play. So and you know she plays a different kind of defense too. I mean she she sometimes she usually goes. M- miss man but because we weren't pushing down as quick or and we did we told him to go to the rim and we got some layups and we time got to the basket and take out to the basket and we got some shots moss got a rim run blah 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 but if they didn't and they settled back into their zone you know and that's exactly what cincinnati said so that's why i said news flash everybody's gonna play a zone so we got to get really comfortable in it because our man sets are really hard to guard we're really hard to guard man what do you think Yeah, I mean, just locking in, I think. And I think our captain's got to really understand that everybody's going to give us their best game. They're, I mean, our team needs to know that. We said that in the locker room. Like, we can't go into a game where five years ago, you know, we were the underdog and we were going after the, the top teams, right? So now it's like every – I don't care what in their minds they think who's good and who's bad. Everybody gives us their best game, everybody. And so I think that's something that's new to them really, to come in and understand that everybody's going to give them the best, their best game ever and, um, you know, nobody's going to back down. Did you feel like there was earlier on some of the offensive uh, effort, like that, that they had an extra pass and they had a chance to shoot? Or was there a little bit of uh, tension? I don't want to say tension. It's Passing him up? Yes. Okay. Yeah, shoot it. Like, I mean, you can't even imagine how many times we say shoot the ball. Shoot the ball when you're open. Just shoot the ball when you're open. You got Desto. She'll go get it. You got Tay can get offensive rebounds. You got Moss. You got, you got Brittany got some big time offensive rebounds there in the second half. I mean, she went after them, right? So, I mean, I think it's just they're so used to playing man, people playing man against us. These two teams that we just played played zone. Wichita State's going to play zone. So we got to get super comfortable. Does it look like we don't practice at all? Because we do. We practice zone offense a lot. Well, and, and, and to Tulane's credit, they did shoot the ball really well to make it a little harder for you to come back out. Yep. I'll certainly grant that as well. Yep. But uh, going into um, the, the, the coming games, you got the uh, the road trip to Wichita State, and then you're coming back for a makeup game yep. um, uh, against uh, Temple. That was scheduled, I think, to be like 1 a.m. Yep. Um, what what unique elements of that bring to preparation? Because we talked a lot about scheduling and those challenges, and you may crowbar a time in there to make up the game. Um, but what is unique um, to, to have the situation where your game didn't really necessarily expect on the schedule, but yep. now you really come on a Monday we're going to play? But I think it's better because we had a long time off before we went to Cincinnati. And I love them all. But to keep them focused and locked in on in that intensity is so different than game days in practice. It just is, right? And so i got to be creative in terms of the, those long that, – that long week was just way too long. I mean – I think personally, so I'm excited that we're going to have back-to-back-to-back games. I think we'll play better like that instead of these long, you know, se- I don't know how many days it was, six, seven days off. That was a long time, mm-hmm. you know, to keep them locked in, com- the competitive edge. I mean, I think it's hard for anybody, not just us. So uh, when they have basketball staring them in the face like that, helps your preparation. Well, it helps their preparation, okay. not mine. My I pre- prepare I every game the same thing. Play. Yeah, but – them yes because now they're going to lock in they know they got a game to come they know they got to focus they know who's coming we're going to have a scouting report they it's not like I have a week off what am I doing this week I got all this time on my hands you know like so I think it's really good you know a lot of teams are going to be playing a lot of back-to-back games and they're going to be p- playing four games in seven days I mean it's going to be a lot these all these makeup games that not just for women's basketball but for men's basketball too it's going to be a lot what's your message going to be now that you're going to start play playing in that zone Drives off that energy, and it's very evident when you have to match it the other way you're coming. But when you get that slow play, like what's your message to them to try and turn that switch, knowing that they're going to be facing that a lot more? Yeah, I mean we j- we just got to practice it every single day and practice and understand that. You know, Diamond wants to get to the rim. Tay wants to get to the rim. Like they want to draw fouls. They want to be, uh, you know, but you can't really so much in a zone. So does Shania, you know, and. So we just got to keep harping on. You got to catch and shoot. You got to catch and shoot. You got to move the ball. You got to get the ball down. You got to move the ball. And when you're open, you got to catch and shoot. You can't pass up open shots. You just can't. And I think we we did a good, decent job in the third and fourth quarter of not, you know, passing up open, open shots. Uh, one last thing. Um, last week I was listening to uh, an interview uh, during a podcast, and um, just 
common theme is, well, last year she used to do this, but now she can do this too. And last yeah. year she used to do this. I'm not picking names because I felt like you went down the list and everybody was picked up with skill yeah. this season. It's yeah. gratifying. Is that it's so awesome. Good. It's awesome. You can't be a championship team and win a lot of games if you don't um, work on your weaknesses. And uh, I think we as coaches and, and, the, and the players, I mean, Tay's in here every night shooting, every night shooting. Like sometimes I'm like, you got to back off because your legs, like you get tired. So we got a brand new gun. They're in the gym. They're like working on their game. So you see Tay can kind of make threes now, right? Diamond's in here. They're shooting and they're working on their game. They're working with their coaches, you know, kind of getting some extra shots up. So I think I think the upperclassmen especially know that, that they, they have to – always work on their weakness because at this level and these coaches are really phenomenal. They're phenomenal coaches all in my opinion everybody in the league. So w we do the same thing. We're going to take away your strength and make you go to your weakness. It's the same thing that they're going to do to us, you know, and I think that just shows how strong our league is.